When will the Seahawks win their first game? Looking at our betting odds from our friends at Ben Online, Tyler Fornes and I are going to break it all down on our Wager Wednesday episode of Locked On Seahawks. You are Locked On Seahawks, your daily Seattle Seahawks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Greetings 12, this is Corbin Smith, your host for Locked on Seahawks. Joining me for our Wager Wednesday bonus episode, my co-host Tyler Fornes. Tyler, we're now nearly halfway through training camp. Once we get to this time of year, we're all so excited for football to return, and it is gone in a blink of an eye. And so we're going to have preseason games coming up this weekend, and we're going to be to the start of the regular season before you know it. And so keeping that in mind... We're going to be taking a look at some props for the Seahawks as a team today and really excited about the two topics we're going to be covering today. The Seahawks don't have very high expectations going into this season, so it's fitting that we're going to be talking about two different props that don't necessarily paint a positive light in terms of where the Seahawks are going to finish this season and how they're going to start for that matter. So let's get to our first topic here on our bonus episode. The big question, Tyler, when are the Seahawks going to win their first game? And I know the outside perspective, there might be a lot of people outside of Seattle that think it's going to be a while. But at the same time, this schedule early on, it kind of fits well for the Seahawks to maybe surprise a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the As we talked about pre-show, this schedule sets up very nicely for the Seahawks to be able to get a couple wings under their belt and when you have a team that ends up exuberating a large amount of confidence, if they get a couple quick wins, like San Francisco, tough matchup, but at the same time, divisional opponent, you can never count out a game against a divisional rival. And then you have Atlanta week three, Detroit week four. Seattle could end up a very sneaky three and one. And then all of a sudden you're looking at New Orleans and Arizona. Both of them, while difficult games, are still winnable, especially with Arizona being a division rival at home. The Seahawks, they, they could end up with three to four wins coming out of the first six weeks, and that is something that we would not have necessarily predicted when you look straight at the roster. So uh, some of these odds are very interesting. Denver, I would almost assume that that's not going to happen. Russell Wilson is going to want to stick it to the Seattle Seahawks organization and Pete Carroll for all of his – frustrations with what the offense brought him over the course of his time uh, with the Seahawks. I feel like San Francisco is a really good value bet at plus 450. We talked about it earlier, division rival. Seattle has had success against the San Francisco 49ers, and you're catching Trey Lance in, in his second start yep. of his first season as the full-time starter. If you're going to uh, be able to catch a team – that talented with their pants down, you want to you want to do it early. So that would probably be my best bet because you're getting really solid odds at 450. And if you don't feel comfortable with that, Atlanta at plus 190 is good as well. Yeah, it's really interesting because on one hand, you know that like you said, Russell Wilson coming back to Seattle, you would think that he's going to be coming in wanting to really put on a show and be like, mm -hmm. hey, look at what you're missing under center now. I'm with this new team that's letting me run the show the way that I want to, and you guys didn't do it when I was here for the past decade. And, you know, all those storylines, they're going to continue to escalate here in coming weeks as we get closer to that game. But you and I both know, Tyler, week one is so unpredictable in the mm -hmm. NFL, especially now. I feel like it's more unpredictable in the last five or six years when you've seen – training camp in the preseason change where teams aren't hitting each other as much. They don't have two days anymore. It feels like that first week is truly the, it's like the second preseason game used to be. And so it's extremely unpredictable. On one hand, that would tell you, well, I should not be betting on that game period. But at the same time, you know, Pete Carroll on the other side is going to be saying, you know what? I coached Russell Wilson for 10 years I know mm -hmm. everything that he's good at. I know all of his weaknesses. And I am one of the best defensive coaches that's ever coached in the NFL and at the college ranks. This is a chance for me to put my medal to the test and show Russ, hey, you know what? I, I can still coach a great defense in the NFL and I can slow you down. And so 
I could see that as kind of a fascinating bet, but I think that what you're saying with San Francisco makes a lot of sense because the Seahawks have historically played really well against the San Francisco 49ers, especially on the road. They won on the road last season there with Russell Wilson, so that's certainly the big caveat. But you are early in the year with Trey Lance, a QB that's got tons of upside, but also has had some pretty rough practices in training camp, and he's going to be dealing with a major learning curve after only playing in a handful of games last year. So catching him in week two, that certainly benefits the Seahawks. If you're really wanting to be safe, I would think the Atlanta Falcons in week three, even though you're not going to get as much bang for your buck with that one, the Falcons might be the worst team in the NFL this year with their quarterback situation, Mm -hmm. the lack of talent around the quarterback. They might be the top candidate for the number one selection in next year's draft. So that would be the safest pick, but San Francisco certainly lines up as a team that the Seahawks could fare well against. Yeah, and I kind of want to circle back to the point you mentioned about week one. Remember the last week, the Packers ended up playing at New Orleans week one, but because of hurricanes, they had to move the game to Jacksonville. And it didn't matter because uh, the Saints whipped them 35 to three. The Packers went on to win 13 games and uh, get the number one seed in the NFC. So uh, week one is entirely unpredictable, mainly because the teams are still getting cohesive and some, and you don't have a lot of film, especially with how things are changing and evolving. Like nobody knew what the Saints were going to be with Jameis Winston at the helm. There was just so many question marks. And the Seahawks kind of have that same advantage. You just don't know exactly what this team is fully going to look like post-Russell Wilson era. You have Drew Locke and Geno Smith. We have a grasp of who those two quarterbacks are. We don't necessarily have a grasp of them as the Seattle Seahawks starting quarterback. And I think that's a really big deal considering everything that the moving pieces with this organization. So if at that plus 185, I really don't see it as good odds, but it is something to be mindful of if you're questioning whether to make a bet or not. That could be a deciding factor because there just is so much unpredictability predictability in that week one. And I think it's also worth noting, we don't know what this offense is going to look like with Russell Wilson in Denver. That's going to be mm-hmm. his first game with a new team, a new head coach in his first game as head coach. I mean, that doesn't always work out well for teams when they are busting in a new quarterback and a new offense with a new head coach. Sometimes it can take some time for that to become a cohesive unit. So there's a lot of question marks on both sides. Denver's expected to be good. I expect they're going to be one of the better offenses in the AFC, but I don't know if they're going to be that in week one. We don't know what the Seahawks are going to look like in week one. There's just a ton of Uh, unpredictability there. If you're somebody that's down on the Seahawks, you certainly could make some money looking at the last three teams on this list at Detroit plus 700 at New Orleans plus 2000 versus the Cardinals in week six. If you think they're going to last that long without a victory, of course, without Russell Wilson, maybe that is how things play out and they really miss their star quarterback. But I actually would not feel good about the odds in those games, and in two of the three at least. I think Detroit is going to be a sleeper to watch potentially in the NFC North. The New Orleans Saints, they're always difficult to beat at home, and that team's got a ton of talent on both sides of the ball. If they get decent quarterback play, they're going to be good. And Arizona, week six, Arizona's kind of the wild card of the NFC West. They could be really good, or maybe by week six, that's when they're already going to be packing it in after a red hot start as they've done the last two years. So there are certainly some winnable games there, but it feels like for Seattle, we're talking first win. It seems like there's pretty good odds. It's going to happen in the first two weeks. And at most the first three, I would think you wouldn't have to worry about those bottom three, which is why they have the odds that they do. Yeah, I, w- I would agree there. Uh, you, you could make an argument that, Hey, Seattle with their quarterback situation, You want to look at the negative side. You can be like, hey, it's Drew Locke and Geno Smith. The offensive line isn't exactly what you would call a studly group in front of them. And you can be like, hey, they lose to Denver. They lose to San Francisco. And then Atlanta comes in and beats them uh, with guys like Kyle Pitts and Drake London on the outside. So uh, then you can be like, hey, maybe Detroit at plus 700 is a good bet. But you also have Dan Campbell, who if you haven't seen uh, tonight's episode of Hard Knocks, cannot recommend enough. Dan Campbell is my favorite head coach potentially of all time. He is so much fun. He's a true football guy. He's a hard ass, and he's he's just somebody that you can get behind. So that's that's a team. There's nothing more scary than a team that plays really hard 
that gets an influx of talent because that team is going to inherently become better exponentially. So that becomes a really interesting one. I still think I look back, San Francisco has the best odds. It's a division rivalry. Trey Lance being in his second start of his first full season. I don't really think you should go anywhere else with your money. I would agree with you. And obviously you're more of a betting expert than what I am. But I think from a football perspective that that is the game I'd be circling because Pete Carroll seems to have Kyle Shanahan's number. You've got a young quarterback with little experience that's going to be early in his first year as a full-time starter. And it's going to be a defensive slugfest, which I think the Seahawks defense, the way things are looking, that, you know, maybe that ends up favoring them on the road, even though the 49ers have a ton of talent. That is a game that is setting up well. We'll see what the Seahawks do. They're hoping to get that first win in week one and send Russell Wilson back to Denver with an L. And that's going to be certainly one of the top storylines going into week one. This bonus episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, whether it's Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, or combat sports. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts, they have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. You're listening to Wager Wednesday here on the Locked On Seahawks podcast. Bonus episode action. I'm your host, Corbin Smith. Join me for today's show, Tyler Fornes. On to our next prop. We just looked at the Seahawks' odds when they're going to win their first game. Now let's look big picture for the entire season. And I'm just going to be up front with you, Tyler. These numbers have shifted a little bit compared to what they were a few days ago. And if you're an optimist, you're going to like what you see here. Earlier this week, Lou's wild card was plus 1,000. It is now dropped to plus 425. That suggests the people in the sports books maybe are a little higher on Seattle's chances of maybe surprising people and getting into the postseason than what they were at the beginning of training camp. I think it's a combination of things, Corbin. I think, one, you hit uh, part one on the head. People are a little bit more optimistic about the Seattle Seahawks. And I think that votes of confidence like the extension for DK Metcalf make a really big deal and hey we're going to commit to you long term the team sees that the player knows that they have that sense of security and mentally you just come into things with a different perspective two I think it also speaks volumes about the rest of the NFC because of the Seattle Seahawks with all their issues their projections having either Geno Smith or Drew Lockett starting quarterback some of the areas on the roster where they're just void of a lot of depth and talent. And you look at the rest of the NFC and, hey, these odds are increasing. That also speaks volume there. I still think this is a really difficult one to bet. There's a reason why missed playoffs is at minus 600. That you have to bet 600 bucks to win 100. To me, that this is one that unless you really feel, feel that strongly about Seattle making the playoffs, I would not touch this bet because plus 425 to me isn't good enough odds to really risk my money because you're looking at the best, the worst odds on the book being minus 600. That's a really heavy split. Yeah, I would think if it was at plus 1,000, it would be much more enticing to take that roll of the dice because look at the division the Seahawks are playing in, Tyler. The NFC West has the defending champions, the Rams, and they're still going to be very good as long as Matthew Stafford's elbow holds up. That's certainly a storyline to keep an eye on. The Cardinals have a ton of talent, but there are some question marks, and they've had some weird things happen this offseason, still having some issues from that Kyler Murray extension, still trying to figure out why they put a clause in it the way they did about basically doing his homework. But nonetheless, the Cardinals have talent. They got a talented quarterback in Kyler Murray. The 49ers have a top five defense potentially, especially with the pass rushers they've got. They can run the football. They've got some weapons on the outside. The X factor there, of course, is going to be the development of Trey Lance. How good is he in his first full season as starter? And how quickly does he improve as he gains experience? So I don't know that this division is quite as good as what it has been the last couple of years, but there's still a lot of talent in this division. And all three of the other teams believe that they have their quarterback. Even if there's question marks with Lance, Murray just got a huge extension. Matthew mm -hmm. Stafford just led the Rams to a Super Bowl. The Seahawks have Geno Smith and Drew Locke. And so if you're looking to make a quick, easy 100 bucks, 
you know, it would make some sense to pick the Seahawks to miss the playoffs and it would be understandable. I do think at the same time, though, you mentioned the state of the NFC with the extra wild card spot. If this was just six playoff teams, I would say stay away from this. But plus 425, the chance to make that kind of money, it's not great, but it's it's way more than you're going to make with the missed playoffs. Getting that seventh playoff spot is a lot easier than what it was with six teams. And this is a conference that doesn't have very many teams with established star quarterbacks. Most of them are in the AFC. And so that does make it something that I think is a bit more debatable what the course of action would be here, especially if Seattle's rookie class ends up being as good as it looks like it's going to be. Yeah, th- this one's a really tough one because like you kind of mentioned, hey, if you want to make a quick 100 bucks betting, I miss the playoffs. The problem is you have to front 600 bucks in order to make that 100 To yeah. me, that, that makes it a very difficult bet. I The NFC this year is going to be so inherently – unpredictable because you know the 49ers are going to be good you know the Packers are going to be good you know the Rams are going to be good outside of that you have question marks about Dallas Philly Washington Minnesota Arizona like like New Orleans and then you could get a sneaky team like Carolina with Baker Mayfield added to the fold there are massive questions all the way throughout this conference if everything really goes the Seahawks way they get a a few uh, calls their way they win all of their close games because one of the toughest things to at least correlate year to year is winning those close games you don't want to be a team that wins a lot of close games because that is incredibly hard to replicate Uh, if you go eight and two and one score games one year you're likely going to flip it around you're going to go like three and five the next year because you just it's not a sustainable trend to be able to do that. If the Seahawks have all their luck go this way, the in a positive way this year, and they win those close games, you, you could see them in the playoffs. But this is a really tough one for me to bet, period, just because there's so much uncertainty surrounding both the, the team and especially the conference. It, it, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of opportunity to make any kind of secure money, which is what I like to do with some of these preseason props. Like, I smash Kansas and Arizona over two and a half wins because I think each team is easily going to win three or four, especially with how their schedules lay out. Uh, We talked about it kind of with Seattle. We thought that they were probably going to win six, maybe seven, but even that was a really close one. Like, you want to try and find those avenues where you can make easier money because there's an easier projection. It's hard for me to project the Seahawks to make the playoffs right now at this moment. Now you go six weeks in and all of a sudden they start four and two, you're having a different conversation. But that's also why this bet happens before the season begins, because there is that element of mystery. Yeah, I think that you just put it perfectly. The element of mystery, there might not be a team in the NFL that that fits better than the Seattle Seahawks, because it's been so darn long since we have seen this team without Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner. And typically when you lose two future Hall of Famers, you're going to be taking a major step back. And yet, the optimism that is flowing out of the VMAC right now, I have been in attendance at almost every one of their training camp practices. And that optimism, there seems to be some justification for it. The quarterback situation is like a storm cloud hanging over this team. And it could derail them. But they have a strong running game. The offensive line, I think, has a chance to really surprise people. The two rookies are looking pretty good. And they got a chance to start on day one. They're going to have the growing pains. The defense has some real star power with Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs. Daryl Taylor is a future pro bowler, maybe even all pro. The, the dude is going to really break out this year. So they have pieces on both sides of the ball. I didn't even mention Metcalf and Lockett. So if they get stable quarterback play and the defense, defense ends up being much better, their skill position players around the quarterback ends up making it easier on those guys – that I don't think you can rule out that this team is going to be able to win eight, nine, maybe even 10 games if everything really falls in place. At the same time, it doesn't seem to me like it'd be very safe because you're betting on a team that doesn't have Russell Wilson or Bobby Wagner, and they're going to be depending a lot on young players, particularly rookies. They could be starting two corners in week one and two tackles in week one. They could have four rookie starters, and Ken Walker the third is going to get a lot of run at running back behind Rashad Penny as well. 
So this is going to be a very young, inexperienced team. You truly would be rolling the dice. And so this feels like one where you just for now, just stay away from any of the options here. You really said it well there, Corbin. You got to put those options away. I I love the fact that Seattle is going to be rolling out so many young players this year. One, I really loved their draft class. Abraham Lucas and Charles Cross at the tackles. I loved Tariq Wollin more than almost anybody in this past cycle, and he is proving so far in camp that he is going to be able to utilize those insane athletic tools that he was given by God to be able to take that next step and be a successful corner. And Kobe Bryant on the opposite side is a perfect compliment to him because he's a very technical, finesse player that's tremendous with the ball in the air. I love the future for the Seahawks because they are playing so many of these young guys. They have two firsts and two seconds next year to continue to build the depth of this roster. And hopefully they're in a position to be able to get a quarterback to help complement all those pieces. The future is bright for the Seahawks. The future is bright for the Seahawks. But this year, uh, you're going to want to really try and look at individual matchups to try and make some money. Yeah, trend carefully. Don't go with season predictions here. Get into the year and and try to get some quick money with some week-to-week bets. And we're going to be dishing those out all season Mm -hmm. long, trying to give you advice going into each week of the 2022 season. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Corbin Smith NFL. You can follow Tyler at The Real Forno. Check out Locked on Seahawks at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and five days a week streaming on YouTube. Coming up on our Thursday episode, Rob Rang and I will be rejoining, and the two of us will break down Seattle's latest training camp practice and dive in a little bit into Saturday's preseason opener in Pittsburgh. Thanks for listening. Go Hawks.